So welcome to the tutorial on getting started with HTC Input Utility inside of Unity and some VR basics when using that plugin. I've already imported the plugin here, so you won't have to wait through that. And I'm going to start by going over into the example scenes because I want to get you started with interacting with the world around you as soon as possible to show that this is not intimidating and that there's a lot of good tools out there for that. So my favorite to get started with in a little sandbox type of setup is number six, controller manager sample. It's the code's very well, well the objects are very well organized. So this gives you a fully functional little VR sandbox to play with so that you can get your hands wet before we start looking at what's involved in everything here. So over in the left where VR origin is, this is essentially our player inside of VR. So if you start drilling down into this, you'll see the camera, which is our main camera inside of Unity, and this is the player camera. You'll see target eye is set to both here, which is standard for a VR camera. You could set up separate cameras for left and right eye, but most people are never going to end up using or touching that. The reason that I like the setup of this example is it has all the trackers, all the controllers set up as separate objects here. So there's a lot of stuff that I'll usually do with Vive trackers and being able to have all of these organized logistically like this personally for me makes it a lot easier to just track what all is happening. A major difference between a Vive input utility and maybe Steam VR or VRTK is everything is roll bound. So this is set to a hand roll and it's the left hand. That makes it so you're able to then have multiple objects and make it so user configurable controllers are make a lot of sense with how you set them up. So outside of that, that is getting the plugin imported, ready to use, getting a basic control rig. Most of the projects that I've worked with professionally, I'll use this control rig as a base for the characters that I build. And Next part I'm going to go into from there though is getting it so you actually can run this as a VR program. Even though we've imported this package in, if we tried to hit play in Unity right now, this isn't going to actually, well, I'll go ahead and show you what happens here. So when we hit play, it's still going to see just a normal main camera. Now because we're in VR, if I go back and get the VR headset that's hooked up to this, it's automatically going to see that we have a VR camera here, but it's not going to properly set up our controllers for us. We need to go up to File, Build Settings, Player Settings, and XR Settings. Oh, actually, it must have auto-enabled on the import here. So if you did not have virtual reality supported here, and you go and hit Play, there we go. That's what I thought we'd see before. So when I pick up the headset and I move it around, you're not going to see anything reacting in here. That's because XR support was disabled. Once we enable XR support, and OpenVR is what is used for Vive hardware, Oculus, of course, for Oculus hardware. And since we're on PC, those are the two platforms that are supported. You are also able to add support for other platforms. I don't see Daydream in here right now. I forget if that currently requires an extra plugin to be imported here. Wave VR, which is what the Vive Focus uses, is a separate package as well. Uh, so um, all of the major VR hardware is currently supported by Vive Input Utility. So you can do Oculus Vive, you can do Vive Focus, you can do Daydream and you can use Oculus Go, all supported with the same set of tools. So teleport, grabbing, interacting with objects, all of those use the exact same set of tools with this and the same scripts for everything. Uh, I forget if I left that enabled or disabled. So I'll go back real quick and yes, that is still enabled. So when we hit play, we see what we expect and this main camera is going to show our VR headsets orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a Vive controller and turn that on. And we got our green light, so we are connected and paired here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this Vive and play and jump into VR real quick.
So when I teleport over this object, I, the basics most people are scared with when they're working in virtual reality from what I've seen is, well, how do I teleport and how do I interact with objects? So what we're going to do is take a look at the basic scripts that come with this, how to use those to get people started with their sandbox ideas very quickly. So I'll jump out of play mode. The way that teleport works in here is whatever you want to have be teleportable, there's a script called teleportable that you're able to put on here. Any object that doesn't have teleportable on it can't be teleported on. So if we look at this table here, it has no teleportable script on it. There's no parent object or anything that has teleportable in on it. So when we go back into play mode here and we try to teleport on top of that box, we'll see this is red here, that's yellow there. This is an out of the box that you're going to get with that behavior and that script can and should be extended if you're actually using it in your project. Because if you don't, ex well, if you don't have your own version of that script in your own project and then you go and you update this library, that script that you've adjusted but you haven't saved in its own place is going to get blown away and any customization you did to how teleport behavior is going to behave in your project, you'll have to start over or restore from version control, which won't be fun. So the next part that we'll take a look at here is how to grab and interact with objects. So there is a basic grabbable script that is provided as well. And there's a couple different grabbable scripts. And if you look through the different demos down here, you'll be able to see what some of those are. The most common that I use for everything, though, is basic grabbable. So it lets you define what button you're going to use in order to grab that with. You're able to do offsets. And the most important functionality is after grab, before release, and on drop. So whenever you want specific behavior to go, so say that you want your object to be able to float around uh, to stay where it is whenever you let go. Well, if that is a rigid body, which this is, you're able to then also call a function that's able to toggle what your physics properties are on your rigid bodies. You're able to make any type of change that you need to on those functions. So to have those built in, ready to go, is what allows you to very quickly prototype without having to do a lot of coding. So at this point, we've covered importing the plugin, the VR settings that are needed, how to grab objects and teleport. So we're going to go into some rapid prototyping at this point. So most rapid prototyping is not going to make use of fancy models, anything along those lines. But we're just going to very quickly work with primitives in the game engine. So I'm going to go over here into our hierarchy, right-click, 3D object, and I'm going to create a cube. Oh, I did not want to create that in there. I wanted a cube at the top level. So I'll go ahead and reset everything on here. And I'll move this up, scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to have this be a vehicle. So I'm going to extend this out a little bit, and then I'll go over onto this, duplicate, move this up a little bit, and then scale that down. So this is going to be the cab of our vehicle. I don't really care about our vehicle having wheels or anything. I just care about the fact that we are able to move it and drive it around. Now, one of the other functions for drive input utility that I like use of the use of a lot is their role binding. So I'm going to additively open the scene right here and since we're just prototyping I'm not going to care about any fancy logic and I'm going to take the VIU binding interface out of the other scene and pull it into this scene. I'm going to move this so it's out of the way a little bit. so it can live over here. And what we're going to end up doing is binding a Vive tracker over to this vehicle. So if we go back over to where our Vive tracker lives, and I want to take our vehicle and have our vehicle be parented to our Vive tracker. 
So whenever we jump in now, I guess I should find a bias tracker really quick. So I've got 1.0 base stations active right now, so I can still use this 1.0 tracker with the bias pair that's hooked up right now. So click on pair. It is looking, I think I can pair this one to that. Yeah, there we go. So now that that's paired, I'll go ahead and throw this headset on. Our menu that is over here, I'm going to go to tracker roll. Plus, so this is my BIOS controller. With the new updates in Steam VR, all of your BIOS trackers are showing up as BIOS controllers. It's an annoyance, but it is how life is for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. That is all we needed the binding panel for right now. When you're actually using that in the real world, you'll of course want to do more than just go in and in the editor manually disable your game object. But that gets out of the way for right now. So now we can see. Oops, that is not. Let's take a look at what is off. So if I look at this tracker, tracker all, tracker one. If I go back and take a look. was assigned what we expect. So let's find this game object in the editor. That is right here. So yep, that is this one. And our vehicle is here. Ah, uh, there we go. So, oh, so when I drag, drag that between different objects, that gave us an offset on our device, and that is why our object was down in the floor and not where we expected it to be here. So I don't really want it to have this type of an offset that's there. So if I go back over to our vehicle, it doesn't have that rotation applied here, so this is because of the fact it's seeing that as a Vive controller. So I'm going to see, let's see, this is another useful. So I'm going to go to Steam VR, but I'm only sharing. I'm going to have to capture the screen once I bring it up. And then me talking to myself will hopefully make sense. So I'm going to display mirror on the headset for Steam VR. Now that I have that mirrored, I'm going to bring this over here, and then I need to add that as a capture source. Okay, so that is being captured. So now you're seeing what is inside of my headset. So I pressed the power button in order to bring this menu up. I'm going to go down to settings, and I am seeing the fun issues because Steam VR updated literally just before I started the screencast, and it looks like they have broken the functionality to be able to bind things. Yeah, once again, because we can't get into that settings menu. Thank you so much, Valve. So that window capture is not needed because that is not working. And we're just going to hack through this right now for the purpose of this proof of concept. So our vehicle is currently crooked. We're going to go ahead and change this so our vehicle is basically flat. We'll go up and copy our component of that vehicle's orientation, stop it, and now paste our component value. And now whenever we hit play, our Vive tracker here is a vehicle that we can drive around. So the really fun thing to do with this is to now strap this on top of an RC car, build a world that models the real room that you're in, and drive your RC car around with a remote. But you get to be in virtual reality with it. So 
the one last part that we are going to cover here real quick, just as a basic building block before we do our next video is tree fabs. And let's see what is a good. So VR origin right here is a standard game object. You'll see that based on its color. Whereas this is a prefab. You can tell that because of its color and it's just darker because it's disabled. So I'm going to hit select up here to find where that prefab lives. lives. It's in the resources folder here. You'll see they have some other prefabs in there as well that are used inside of here. Now since right now we are on Unity 2018.2.of2 for this demo. That means 2018.3, which is the new prefab changes, are not live yet. So whenever we take VR Origin up here, and I'm going to have that live in resources, and drag this down to create a prefab, those other prefabs that had lived underneath this, when you hit select, well, those no longer are all standalone prefabs. VR Origin is now our prefab, and it has broken those prefabs before. So that means that once 2018.3 is out, you'll be able to still have all of that abstraction, but say, hey, my character, or let's say our player prefab here has everything set up so we can reuse this through multiple different types of projects, throw that into multiple scenes, and you just have a VR-ready character rig that's ready to go. Whereas how this was before, where we had all of the parts underneath, it makes it very nice and clean if you have those being used in multiple places. But when we want a player that we can just instantiate for any VR experience, that wasn't useful. So this was willingly making that decision to say, I'm willing to sacrifice what's underneath here. And once point three is out and in the wild and bug tested, that no longer is a trade we have to make. But for now, I'd much rather have a player that's able to just be dropped into any scene and ready to go. So there is our basic overview of getting started with VR with five input utility and how to do a lot of the basics that I, people I've talked to have seemed confused about. So hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching.